Hey there, it's Mr. Wistar again. Um, this is part two of our lesson on implementing linked lists. This is going to be our Empire Strikes Back to the Star Wars that was part one. If you haven't watched part one yet, you really should go watch that before you uh, watch this video because otherwise the stuff that we're about to cover isn't going to make a lot of sense. So go watch part one, then come back and watch this video. This lesson is going to focus on implementing iterators. We're going to talk about what the structure of an iterator looks like inside, and then we're going to go through the pseudocode for implementing uh, the most common list iterator methods. Uh, you all know how I feel about list iterators. I think they're a huge pain in the neck. Uh, after learning how they're implemented, you're probably going to think they're even more of a pain in the neck. But remember that we can't see into the middle of a list. Our users can't access nodes in the middle of our list without using a list iterator. So there we go. Okay, just to review really quickly, we're talking about linked lists. A linked list consists of a whole bunch of nodes that are connected together with each other with these pointers. Um, they're kind of like cars in a subway. And in the actual linked list class, there's only one node variable that points to the front of the list. We get in the front of the subway, and then we make our way back to the back of the train. Okay, as far as list iterators go, Remember in our unit on using list iterators, we said that list iterators don't really point at one node specifically. They kind of live in between nodes. And that's why we're going to have two pointers here. We're actually going to have a pointer called position, which is equal to the node that we just jumped over. And we're also going to have a second pointer that points to the node, bef um, the node that we jumped over before the node that we just jumped over. And the reason why we're going to need both of those pointers, you'll see when we get to the unit on, or when we get to the slide on um, adding and removing, uh, you're going to need those extra pointers in order to keep your list together. But we're going to end up with a list iterator class. This is another one of those private inner classes. And we're actually going to make the data inside of it also private because we only want our users to use list iterator methods. You might be asking, well, what does a list iterator look like when you first construct it? Um, remember that you sh really shouldn't do anything with an iterator until you've called the next method at least once. And so when you first create a list iterator, both of these variables should be set equal to null. Okay. Again, just like with those other list linked list methods, the best way to understand what's going on is to draw pictures. There's pictures in your book. I would encourage you to draw your own pictures until you physically kind of manipulate the diagram to see what's going on it's hard to get a grasp of what's really happening but let's talk about has next has next you know is a boolean method returns true if the list iterator has more nodes that could come after it if you called next so looking at this code here you'll see again really common to have this sort of if else um, split between what you should do in this case if position equals null Remember, going back to our um, description of what happens when an iterator is first created, if position equals null, then that means that we've never used this iterator before. So really, you have to ask a second question, which is, does the node have, or does the linked list have at least one node? If the first variable is not null, then has next should return true. Otherwise, the list is empty, so it should return false. If position is not equal to null, then that means that our iterator is in the middle of our list somewhere. And then you have to ask us a, a different question, which is, does position.next equal null? If position.next equals null, then that means that you're at the end of the list and you should return false. Otherwise, you should return true. Again, because there's more nodes that you, could that you can access by calling next. How do you access those nodes by calling next? Again, draw pictures. I can't emphasize it enough, but I'll keep saying it draw pictures. Just like with uh, the methods in part one, we're going to throw exceptions uh, in these list iterator methods because if you try to call next and there's no next node, bad things are going to happen. And so we're going to throw an exception so that our program crashes before those bad things actually happen. Assuming that's not the case though, what has to happen? Well, a couple things. Step one, we have to assign position to previous. We have to capture the, um, the node that we jumped over last uh, and update the value of the previous variable. 
then again, we've got this if else thing going on. If position equals null, if we've never used this iterator before, then what we're going to do is we're going to assign position to first. We're going to jump over the first node in the list. Otherwise, we're just going to set position equal to position.next, which really means we're going to jump over the next node in the list. And in both cases, notice that last statement there. Remember that the side effect of calling next is that it returns the node that it jumps over. That's the only way to access items in the middle of a linked list. And so we have to return position.data. We have to return the data of the node that we just jumped over. Okay, let's talk about remove. Remove is a little more complicated even than next. There's a really nice diagram in your book, which I would actually encourage you to sort of have open while we talk through the code. We're going to throw exceptions again. Um, if position equals previous, we're going to throw an exception. If you take a look, let's skip down to the bottom of this. The very last step that we do when we call remove is we set position equal to previous. And so essentially what that if statement at the top means is if the last thing we did with our iterator was call remove, then we can't call remove again. Remember that you have to call next again before you can call remove. And so this if statement is essentially forcing our program to crash if we try to call remove twice in a row. Assuming that's not the case, then we have another if else. If our iterator is currently pointing at the first node in the list, then we have to stop what we're doing and call remove first in order to complete our task. The reason for that is simple. If you try to remove the first node in the list, even with a list iterator, you have to, you have to update the value of the first variable to make it point at node number two. Otherwise, all those other linked list methods like get first and remove first aren't going to work. So we're just going to call remove first, let it do all the work, and then we're fine. Assuming that that's not true, that we're in the middle of our list somewhere, then our job is actually even a little bit simpler. What we're going to do is we're going to say previous.next gets position.next. And I want you to sort of think about this. Imagine that our linked list consists of three nodes. A, B, and C. And assuming that, assume that um, we've called next twice. So we jumped over A, we jumped over B, then we called remove. Well, let's think about what's going on here. Um, previous at this point points to A. Position at this point points to B. And we're trying to remove B. So really what we have to do is we have to make A point to C. And that's what this statement here says. It says take the previous node's next pointer and point it to the current node's next pointer. So that means take A and make it point to C, which has the effect of deleting B because we've removed it from our chain. Now A points to C, and that's what that statement does. Last part, which we've already gone over, is we're going to set position equal to previous, uh, which essentially is just going to make our method crash if we try to call it twice in a row. OK, let's talk about add. Add is actually even more complicated than remove, and it's so involved that we're going to break it up over two slides. Um, neither part is excessively complicated, but we should talk about each part separately. Again, there's a really good diagram in your book. I hope you're sort of following along while we talk through this. Um, the first thing we have to check is to see if first is equal to null. That means what? It means that our list is empty. And in that case, again, we can stop what we're doing. We can call add first and have the linked list take care of adding that node to the list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to assign position equal to first. What that means is remember that the way that we're supposed to be able to use add is that we can keep calling it over and over and over again. And the add method jumps over the node that you just added to the list. So that if you call add five times in a row, it's going to add five nodes to the list in the order that you added them. And so we have to set position equal to first to get ready for the next time that we call add. But let's say that's not true. That means that our list is not empty. So in, th in that case, the syntax here is kind of similar to what we do for um, those add methods from the previous lesson. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new node. We're going to put the object into the node. And then we have to update the list. And I want you to kind of think about or take a look at the diagram here. Let's say, going back to our previous example, that we're trying to insert a node in between B and C. So right now, 
um, previous points at A, position points at B. What we're going to do is we're going to say new node.next gets position.next. We're going to take our new node and we're going to point it at the node that comes after position. We're going to take our new node and we're going to point it at C. Step three, we're going to say position.next gets new node. That means we're going to take B and we're going to make it point at the new node. So again, if we're keeping score at home, B points to our new node, our new node points to C. And that's what we would want to have happen. Last step, just like in the previous slide, instead of setting position equal to first, we're going to set position equal to our new node so that we're set up to call the add again. And then the last uh, step here um, after our if statement is that we're going to assign position to previous. And the reason why we do that is so that our iterator is properly updated for being able to use with remove um, and the other things that are part of our iterator. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Again, I can't stress the diagrams enough. But in this lesson, we've taken a look at what the structure of an iterator is, and we've looked at how to implement has next, next, add, and remove. All right, you're all set.